Hey everybody, it's Luke Gordon, physical therapist here, and I wanted to make one more video about FCEs, or functional capacity evaluations, just to clear up a few more thoughts that I had. So up until this point, I've done two videos on FCEs so far. The first video is just what an FCE is. The second video had five of the most frequently asked questions, which covers quite a bit of ground. I think the second video was really good about answering any of those questions that might be creeping into your mind if you're scheduled for an FCE. And then in uh, today's third, and probably my final video on FCEs, I just wanted to talk about some of the things that you should make sure you don't do during the FCE um, just to give yourself a good shot at having kind of like what I would consider a clean test result or something pretty usable for your workers comp claim so uh, I'm gonna go through those things I've got three things that I, that I think you should avoid and then I've got two things I want you to consider as well uh, in terms of getting the best outcome possible so I'm gonna dive into those in just a minute uh, but first off Hopefully if you're watching the video, you already know what an FCE kind of is. I would say go back and watch the other videos if you don't. And uh, more than likely if you're watching the video, you're in the middle of a worker's comp claim. So you've been injured at work. And now you're trying to figure out what you can do safely in terms of a regular consistent day of work. You know, an eight hour day, 10 hour day, 40 hour week. So that's the basis or the underground or the background of an FCE to begin with is that you've probably been off work for a while and people like your claims manager and your employer, um, people like that, your doctor potentially, they want to know what you can and cannot do on a consistent basis. So in video one and two a little bit, I talked about those specific tasks they're going to test you on. I'm not going to go into huge detail now, but they want to know, can you sit, stand and walk for prolonged periods? Can you lift this much weight from this height to that height? Can you carry? Can you use your hands? Can you um, go up and down stairs or ladders? So they're trying to figure all this stuff out. And what you want with your FCE is you want the report to come back pretty nice from your FCE examiner, examiner, whether it's a PT or an OT, that says that you know you gave good effort, that you gave consistent effort, and that your results are valid. So that's kind of what we're driving at with this video is that with that in mind, there are some things you want to avoid doing that are going to make your report a little more murky so that people like your claims manager or your employer, especially if you don't have a good relationship with your employer, um, that you want to avoid some things that are going to make you uh, seem a little less reliable, I guess is the nice way to put it. Uh, the more, the less sugar-coated way is you don't want to look like a liar. I mean, essentially, you don't want to be labeled as like a malingerer, which is kind of a worker's comp term you don't want people to think oh well you're just faking your injury and you really can go back to work so the point of this video then is going to be what are some of those things that you want to avoid just to uh, you know appear that you're giving good effort um, which hopefully you are um, but it's confusing too to do an FCE sometimes because you don't know what's good effort and what's not effort and what's considered normal what's not considered normal and then sometimes you walk into the room and you're you know you meet your FCE uh, evaluator and you don't get a good vibe right off the bat you know you're like oh this guy is grumpy or this gal doesn't like me or this person is paid for by um, you know the workers comp system so it's important that you just do everything that you can to give yourself a good shot at, at a successful test so I know it's kind of a long-winded intro and I am gonna get into those key points I promise but that's that's where I'm coming from is to help you understand those things and hopefully to help you move along smoothly throughout your claim without so much hassle and headache and stress and worry and things like that which of course don't help anybody um, anyways so there you go so let's talk about what not to do then um, the first thing I'm gonna throw out there because I think it's important to say again I did say it in video two, but you don't want to skip your pain meds typically so a lot of people who are have chronic pain or they've been uh, off work for several years you're on a consistent pain management program and unless you've talked to your doctor about it I would not recommend skipping your pain medications now obviously I'm just a guy on a video so you can't take my recommendations too far but what I would encourage you to do then is, is if you have questions about that talk to your doctor well in advance of your FCE because you know it can take a while for your doctor to get back to you but more than likely if you're on a consistent pain management program they're gonna want you to stay consistent with that the only exception I think to that would be is that if to return to work if you can't be on any of the pain meds they might want you to skip it but again clarify that at least a week or two before your FCE so that you don't go into your FCE skipping your pain medications or your neurologic medications uh, not neurologic but like nerve pain medications like Lyra or gabapentin something like that you don't want to go in there and just feel exactly I mean completely horrible um, unless of course that's what your doctor recommends so thing number one not to do don't skip your pain meds unless you've talked to your doctor about it and that's the actual plan um, the second thing is probably the biggest thing that you're gonna take away from this video is that one of the things that makes 
FCE's murky for the evaluator and which will show up on your report in a really negative way is if they feel like you are exaggerating your pain behaviors um, or you're just not putting forth very good effort. So that first thing is really important. Um, pretty much everyone in FCE is gonna have pain, whether it's back pain, leg pain, arm pain, shoulder pain, whatever your injury is, or other medical conditions you're dealing with at the same time, you're gonna have pain, but exaggerating the pain to make sure your examiner sees it, or really over-communicating the pain and really being hyper-focused on the pain, typically will not work in your favor. It will work against you, um, because your evaluator is gonna get the impression that you're just not putting forth any effort because you have pain. Now, that being said, pain is a really tricky thing to interpret. It's uh, very individual, it's very subjective, it's very dependent on you as a person, um, but the way that your evaluator, I guess, assesses your pain is, is kind of what's important during your tests too. So again, I think it's very important to be honest with your assessor, talk to them about the types of pain you have, hopefully you get a good impression of them that they're putting together your medical history and asking you good questions so that they can start to kind of match up your diagnosis and your treatments and what's going on with you to uh, what they would consider a normal uh, level of pain. So again, it's really hard for me to explain it better than that, but um, don't go out of your way to over-exaggerate or over-express your pain because it won't help you. The second thing that I kind of mentioned on that is uh, what they're really looking for is um, consistent effort from you, effort that would match up with your medical diagnosis and your reports of pain. Um, so just because you have pain, I would encourage you communicate it to your evaluator. Again, it could be a PT or an OT, um, but also give the best effort you can within reason. Again, that's a little bit murky, not the clearest way to say something, but just try to work with the evaluator and show them what you can and can't do. Um, on the tail end of that though, of course, because this is a confusing topic, is you really don't want to work too hard either. Um, because you can push through. There's, I've had people that can push really hard for one day, but then they're wrecked for the next seven days to two weeks. So you really don't want to do that either. So it's really a fine line between working within a reasonable level, tolerating some level of pain, making sure your evaluator knows that you're in pain, but you're still giving good effort, and then not overdoing it, um, and then showing people, you know, showing the evaluator that maybe you can do a lot more. Because ultimately, again, we're trying to figure out what you can do on a consistent, regular, day in and day out, week in and week out basis. And if you just go all hardcore one day, knowing that you're gonna feel like crap for the next two weeks, that won't do you any good either. Um, so again, on the tail end of that, consistent performance is what you know your evaluator is looking for. They want to get a good impression of what you can do for a longer period of time. So just try to work within those parameters. Um, and then one last recommendation I might make, or two actually, I said two at the beginning of the video, so I might as well stick with that. Uh, but the first one is, um, I don't think it's a bad idea to request a two-day FCE if it's an option. When I was doing FCEs, which I don't do them anymore, um, but I'm still very familiar with how they go since I did hundreds if not thousands of them uh, but I did I had the option for a one day versus a two day I preferred the one day as the evaluator but definitely the two day uh, worked in, in um, the the clients advantage at some point especially if you're worried about your pain level jumping if they force you to do too much that first day so if it's an option request a two-day evaluation um, and you know just to see if that's if that's okay with the evaluator because then they can test and retest you and get a better idea of if they push you well or if they push you too hard that first day so that's my first one the second one too um, i'm sure any therapist watching this video if there's any therapist watching the video won't like this one but if you feel like you're in a position where you're going to an fce evaluator you've heard bad things um you're you really think that you're in an unfair position, I would encourage you to reach out to an attorney who specializes in workers' comp. Uh, again, I've worked with a lot of good attorneys who are just giving their clients good, solid advice. In my opinion, they weren't trying to work the system or scam the system or anything like that or teach you how to just you know live on a pension the rest of your life, although it does happen sometimes. But um, you know, reach out to an attorney to say, hey, can I talk to you about the case? What do you think of this? What do you think of that? Um, because sometimes they can be a really valuable asset to your claim and they can help you um, 
you know, go through the claim and uh, navigate it. On the other side of the coin, too, is if you had an FCE and you feel like they really kind of threw you under the bus with the report and now you don't like the direction your claim is heading, I don't think it's a bad idea to, to talk to an attorney at that point either. Just make sure they know workers' comp really well, as it does kind of vary from state to state. Uh, so again, I'm sure the therapist won't appreciate that advice, but I, I advise clients on that on a regular basis. If you don't like the way you're being treated, talk to an attorney. Um, you know, workers' comp, uh, that can be a really magical word. Uh, you know, I'm about to talk to my attorney. So anyhow, uh, do your best. Hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, I've got those three videos. I'll link it towards the end here on a playlist, uh, something fancy like that. And then as always, just leave a comment or a question below if there's anything I can help you with. Um, share some experiences or something like that. And I'll get back to my normal YouTube videos here soon talking about different types of pain relief and, and stretches and all that good stuff. But uh, thank you for watching. Hope you're doing well. Please leave me a comment and like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.